Hi. I say, let's do it again. Hi. Hi. Awesome. Uh, my name is David. David. Uh, you can call me Dave if you like to. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about. So the, the name of the talk is Pragmatic Performance Patterns. I realize now waiting here, I think that it's probably like practical performance patterns, like how I work with performance in a couple of in a couple of situations. So that's what we're going to talk about. And like this is probably like the worst worst situation for me when it comes to performance. Like I get a text message from, it could be like a service or it can be an email or something, but it can also in the worst case be from your boss just telling you like, hey, we have a problem, the desktop CPU is, is, is like going through the roof. And you know, the timing is never good. It always ends up being like when I want to go to bed. And it's also usually on, yeah, like it's really bad timing. Uh, and so my first thought then all, quite often it just becomes like, hey, I'm just going to spin up a new server if it's a front end, if it's the back end related. But in some cases, I just think like, no, like I need to do this for real. Like I need to like put on my optimized hat and like, I need to optimize this. And, you know, if I start like the node and like in version six, you can like use the inspector so you can open this like Chrome developer tools and you can run it in node and you can get like uh, this CPU like profiler, like awesome. And then I just look at it and I become very insecure. Like what, what in here am I actually exactly supposed to, to, to do? This is not, don't look at this screenshot because this is like not a real like example, but like in general, like I, I don't understand like what, what, what actually was the cause of this. Um, and yeah, so like, then I feel sad about myself because I feel like something here has screwed up. And there's like some cases it's, it's, it's easy. Like you can go in, you can see that there was a commit earlier that you could revert. There was something like very evident that created this. But in some cases, it's like behavior are different on a different, different time of, of time of the day. Or maybe it's like a browser that you didn't test on beforehand or something like that. So I feel sad. So like about a year ago at Nordic.js, I was sitting in the crowd and I was like gonna start a new project that was like kind of work related, but like also a little bit like not a high priority. So I wanted to do something and I wanted to do it a little bit differently. Uh, and so I work for Mike. So we're like a media company, so we do articles. So a big portion of what we do is, is article and historically it's always been HTML. So, so, uh, so I, I got this idea when I was sitting there, like maybe we could just take this HTML and we can like, transform it to JSON because like, JSON is much easier to work with. Because the reality today is that even though, though we, like, a lot of the, the stuff we do is HTML, we also need to have our articles on other platforms. So like Facebook instant articles, but we also need to be on Apple News and we also need to be on AMP. And like I said, we had like, we had, HTML in, in, the, in the database, and then we, now we need to be on a, like a JSON-based format. So first it was HTML, and then like I did like this really dirty like parser normalizing step, and then I got JSON, and then like I rendered it to something else. That's like was the product that was that I wanted to start. And so like the initial new commit here was like September 10th, and that was uh, so that was during already JS. So what I did then because I wanted to to be performant. Like, I wanted this to be fast. I wanted to feel like this is going to be good. So like just a few days when the product wasn't really working, it was very, very early stage, I figured like, hey, let's like, try to like break the, the normal pattern that I have and just like create a benchmark now, like really, really early on. Let's just like see what happens. Uh, so I created this super simple benchmark. So it just like it parses some, some, some HTML, it runs it a couple of times, and then it prints out like how long time it took. It's a pretty naive, but I took an article that I felt was like representative of how our article looks like. Um, and then, like, so what I ended up doing was I ended up changing a little bit the way I, I normally do things. So like, I like to do things TDD when possible. So I like to like write a filling test, then I make the test pass, and then I like go in and just like do some kind of refactoring. But now when I have this like performance, like I wanted to, to run this benchmark, I ended up being a, a situation where like, I ran the, run the benchmark when I got the test pass, and then I refactored, and then I went back. I run the benchmark again, and then I refactored, and I run the benchmark again, and I refactored if needed. So like, this phase of like making it performant was much earlier in the process. And since I had run this like, really simple first like raw version, 
I had kind of something to, to compare with. So I did this, like, as I said, like, it was a simple and fast benchmark, and like, I tried a different few inputs just to make sure that like, I didn't have like, some weird edge case. Uh, and like, in this case, it was like, if it takes less than one milliseconds to run this like, parsing benchmark, I'm just going to give myself a high five and move on. And if it's going to take more than one milliseconds, I'm going to say that it failed. And this was just like a very arbitrary number. Like one millisecond is like, that's always, this is always going to be fast enough to parse something. Even if I took, a, took an article that was like three times longer than the one I was looking at, it would take maybe three milliseconds. It's still like, the time is very small. And you know, like the reason I did it was because like, I felt like I was the best. Like I did something that was like really, really fast. And it was just like an awesome feeling. And that was the only motivation at start. Like I didn't, I didn't do it because like I needed it to be like that fast. I just did it because like doing something fast is awesome, and I thought that was like a good, a good enough reason for it. Um, but then like comes the situation where I like add in a new feature and it just like got slow, and then I didn't feel awesome at all. I felt, yeah, I felt like this guy. Um, So then I went back, and in a few cases, I, I, did, I did what I, what I showed earlier. Like, I ran the profiler, and in some cases, I could like, see, like, okay, so, like, this is the thing that now makes it slower, and that would be a, a great help. Uh, but, in also, but also, like, I got surprised, because I thought that when I was going to start these, this, like, put on my, my, like, do benchmark first, I thought that, like, okay, so I'm probably going to end up, like, removing a lot of for eaches. Because, like, if you Google for each versus for JavaScript performance, you get, like, 800,000 hits. So, like, this is probably, like, a big thing. Uh, so the short backstory there is, like, for each is, like, 100 times slower than four, or maybe 50 times slower or 20. But, like, it's a lot slower. Um, but I got pretty surprised. Because like that didn't matter at all in my benchmark. Like I was always below one millisecond, even if I did a for loop or a for each or a will while loop or whatever I did. Like that was not the, the 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 most important piece. Like what I ended up doing in a lot of situation was just just like deleting code. Like if you delete code because you're doing something more than what you actually have to do, then it's gonna become a little bit faster. And in a few cases, that was like really significant. It made a big difference. But I also, like, there were things that were not really intuitive at all. Like, I had, in one place, I, I wanted to, like, normalize white space because, like, I wanted, I needed it to be that if you had a, 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 a tab, it, it needed to be a space, basically, or a, a new line. And I just added that. I added a, a regex, and I thought, like, now I'm going to continue to the next thing. I'm not going to need to care about this. This is not going to make any difference at all because, like, regex, they should be fast enough. But this was like a hotspot, and this was something that was called all the time. So I ran this yesterday, and like running it a thousand times before, well, I'll go back real quickly. So what I did instead was to do like a index off for place in the in the string. This is not maybe not like the the, the, the most pretty code I've written, but I, it's like readable. It felt okay. It felt like it was a K hack, um, but like it made this gigantic difference. Like, and I like, if I had like. Try to to come with that come with that up to if I had tried to figure that out after the fact like after I had had done all of this and I was in a situation where I was real slow for real I would never have thought about this but this could be then like some something could make it faster so like it made it like yeah a lot faster so this is running it like a thousand times it went it ran from taking like 09 to like 06 and like still now like looking at this slide. I become like so. I become like a little bit proud because this really made me feel awesome, and I really wanted to high five everyone that I met uh, because, like, I felt that I could. I had like, I had like learned something new about like how I could write performing code. Uh, but in a few cases, and this is from a, from another project. But so this is this is the same like the same thing. Like I. I could use this performance sort of thinking to, to choose what third-party modules to use. Because I had a benchmark that I run all the time. And so if I needed something, I, if, I, if there were two MPI modules that had like basically the same API, I would know then which one was the fastest one. So this is an example that, that, we, that we implemented in production a few days ago, where we wanted to uh, HTML encode a string. And we changed the, 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 
the module and we saved a bunch of time. This took me like hours to figure out that was something I could have, could have done. If we had done this that I'm talking about now, like doing benchmark first, then we, pro we would have noticed this early on in our project. Um, so like I started feeling like a snail, but then when I did this like enhancements, I started feeling like this. Like <laughs> Uh, so, that what this meant was like performance was a priority from the beginning, and like it also meant that when I wrote my code, I had like a new pair of glasses that I could put on. Like that's one of the thing I love about writing tests. It's like when you write tests, you put on a new pair of glasses because you're trying to like break the thing you wrote. So like first you have some kind of requirements, and then you write tests, and you're like now I'm kind of trying to break what I did, and then like with the, the, the test glasses, I could like really try to cheat. I could like try to be the person like running and like doing things in like a really horrible, not horrible, but in a, like in a, in a, in a really, really like in, in a good way, maybe, maybe. So like there were a few situations where like I did an optimization and I thought to myself like, okay, this is probably gonna be, be fast, but it should like create a bug. But it didn't. And then I was like, hmm. Is this like me not understanding that the optimization actually worked, or is this the is this the is this a situation where I have a bad test cases? So, a lot of these optimization and just like rethinking like the, the functionality meant that I wrote like more tests and better tests. Um, so, th but this also changed how I think about performance today. So, like when the situation comes up, like when the boss these days sends me a <laughs> text message, uh, hey Anthony, by the way, a um, uh, text message with the, uh, the CPU like this, um, I do it a little bit differently. So, like, I try to, to mimic the way I did it before. Like, I try to take and see if I can cut out like a piece of the code that I write and see, like, can I write a benchmark or, or somehow get like a performance number on like all the different pieces? Because if there was one thing I learned with sort of the regex example, for example, uh, is that, well, sorry, there, yeah. So also look at like code to delete, but what I really learned from the Legacy for example is that like I, I need to prepare to be surprised. Like I probably, like my gut feel around what I'm spending time on, it's probably just gonna be completely wrong. That's the reality, well that's the reality in a lot of cases when you do programming, like you, ha you, you need to be prepared to be surprised about what, you, what you're spending time on, time on. And I'm also like, I don't, do these like, kind of like benchmarks and then you know, some optimizations if I don't have tests. I mean, that, to me, that was a really big learning. It's like, I don't want to put on these like optimization glasses with code that I can't test if it's secure or not, if, if it's working or not, because I, get, I cannot feel secure that like my benchmarks and my optimizations and all of this is gonna be, it's gonna be working out in a good way. So this means that I can feel like this guy now, even when I'm like working on, on existing code. Yeah, that was it.